What's going on everyone? It's King Touch Pro and welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Guys, I have a really cool effect to show you in today's video. If you haven't already seen the thumbnail and the title, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a disappearing stop motion effect in Final Cut Pro 10 slash Photoshop because I'm pretty sure you're going to need Photoshop for this unless you find an easier way of doing them, then, then please let me know down in the comment section below. Otherwise, please leave a like if you guys want to see more effects just like this one on the channel and be sure to turn on the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on video effects for your music videos and so on. And I actually got the inspiration from Kyle's new music video which literally came out I think today. It's called Hey Julie. It's on World Star Hip Hop. It's by Kyle featuring Lil Yachty and I'm going to push play here. I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm going to push play and you're going to see the effect come up right here where Kyle just pauses for a second and then we have like a split, like for a split frame, it it, it like kind of like instantly changes into what you would call stop motion photography or I guess that's what it's called, but it's just paper being crumpled up and then reversed into something else if I push play. You're going to see that it starts to take effect and then he kind of pops out. And if you're going to be doing this effect, I would suggest that if you're actually filming the music video or you want to actually take a photograph of the artist or the rapper or whatever you're going to be using first. So you want to you want to film there and then take a photo in the exact location that they were. And then that way it just makes life so much easier when it comes to uh, making sure that the background is seamless. As you can see, it's still the same it's still the same location, but just as a different uh, angle of the of the photograph. So the video I'm going to be using to do this tutorial is going to be called uh, Baby Babysitter featuring Offset. Link to both of the videos are going to be in the description. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag this portion into the timeline right as he jumps. That's where I want to make the, that's where we want to add a freeze frame so we can pretty much take a screenshot in Final, in Final Cut Pro 10 and I'll show you guys how to do that. So we're going to just skim through and I want it to end there. So I'm going to press Command B to split that and, and, and cut it. And now we have this, okay? Find a place where we want the effect to start. So I want it to start right as he jumps. So like around here, I believe. I'm gonna press the M key. So I set a marker. That way, if for whatever reason, I, I, I don't know where my time head is at, I can easily go back. So once you guys are here, we're gonna go into uh, file. We're gonna go to share and we're gonna go to save current frame. You probably don't have that. So we're gonna go into add destination. We're gonna go into the destinations over here. And then down where it says add destination, we're going to go and find where it says save current frame. Click and drag that into any of these locations here. Once you guys are there, I'm going to go into file. I'm going to go to share and then we're going to click on save current frame. And then we're going to make sure that it's on JPEG image. We're going to, go, uh, we're going to name this to frame. I'm going to click next. I'm going to save it to my desktop. I'm going to click save. I'm going to click replace. And we want to go into open. So we're going to be using Photoshop. And if you guys don't have Photoshop, you can easily download a free trial by going to adobe.com. You don't need a subscription. And honestly, you don't really need a subscription. If you're going to only be using Photoshop for this exact effect, then that's totally fine. It's completely legal and free. So link is going to be in the description. So we're going to go into desktop. We're going to select the frame that I saved it to, which is going to be, I think it's this one. So I'm going to click on open. And what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the background layer to unlock the layer. We're going to press W on the keyboard to go into the quick selection tool. And we're going to zoom up our uh, tool by pressing the right and left arrow uh, or bracket key on the Mac. And we're going to go ahead and just make a selection of him and make sure that you select his legs. Now we're doing this because we don't have the original background without him in it and we have to actually remove him and make a copy of himself that way we can actually print him out and then do the stop uh the stop animation effect uh, once you're here what we're going to do is we're going to go to the select and mask you can copy these settings here on the right under the global refinements smooth is at 34 feather is at zero contrast is at 41 percent the shift edge is at zero percent and you want to click on OK. Just make sure that the everything that's red is not being selected and everything that is in color, I guess, is going to be selected. So I'm going to go back here and just quickly select that again or I can just go here, making sure that everything's selected. Great. I'm going to click on OK. Once you have it uh, selected like this, 
What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the quick selection tool by pressing W, right click in the inside of that uh, inside of that selection and go into where it says uh, fill and we're going to go on to content aware. Photoshop is going to do its magic to kind of remove him from the image and all you're going to do now is go into clone stamp tool and then we're also going to be using the spot healing brush tool. Since the background is relatively easy and it's pretty much a bush, this is extremely easy to do. So we're going to go into the clone stamp tool, hold on alt or option. If you're on the Mac, I'm pretty sure you're going to be on a Mac. Click anywhere here to sample that and then you can go ahead and just click and drag and this will pretty much sample everything that's in the crosshair inside of that circle. So this way it allows you to pretty much mask out that he was never there, which is kind of interesting and pretty cool if you were to ask me. So uh, once you actually remove the guy from the image here, it should look like this using your Photoshop magic skills. And then you're gonna save this as an image. Just go to file, go to export, go to save for web, and just save this as a JPEG uh, right over here, okay? Once you save that to like your desktop, you also want to make a copy of this guy. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna unlock the layer. We're gonna go into the quick selection tool by pressing W and we're gonna make a selection of him. I'm gonna zoom in here. So now we're gonna go into the select and mask again and we did a pretty good selection. You can copy these settings over here to get it exact and then click on okay. Then press command J or control J and then you can hide the background layer and now it's gonna be a transparent background with just him like this. Don't move him because that's just gonna make things a little bit more complicated if you if you, once we import all of the images into Final Cut Pro 10. So once we're here, we're gonna go into file, we're gonna to go to export, save for web, and then save this as a JPEG. And once you save it as a JPEG, we're going to Finder. We're gonna print this out. Now, if you have a color printer, yay for you. You are very lucky. I only have a black and white uh, laser printer. So I just printed this on a laser printer and it came out in black and white. Once I made my print, it looks like this and looks pretty good. Once you cut them out from the paper, it's gonna look like this. You wanna photograph the actual image, okay? And if you have a tripod, that's great. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you have a tripod, but just make sure you have good lighting and you have a straight on shot of the little cutout. And then you want to kind of slowly kind of roll the paper in, kind of like if you're crushing it, and maybe do eight of these. So you're kind of creating a stop motion effect, as you can see. So the next one is gonna look like this, and then the next one's gonna look like this, and you're gradually bringing it closer to like a ball, which looks like that, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag each image into this uh, canvas here. So we're gonna go to Finder, we're just gonna drag it in here, then press Command Enter to just paste it there. Uh, you want to right click and go into the rasterize layer, select him again. It's very simple. So we're going to click and drag, make a selection and you're done. Okay. Now just go into select and mask. If you want a perfect cutout, copy these settings. Okay. And then click okay. And then press command J to cut him out from the background. Then get rid of the image here, the background, go back to your layer, which is this one click and drag and just start scaling this to the size of, of this one here. So press command T, hold down or just move, kind of tilt this to kind of get it exact. So hold down shift and option and drag this up and then zoom in and try to align it as, as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, like right there is good. And then press command enter to accept the changes. Now we're gonna click on this. We're gonna click on the adjustments tab here. We're gonna go into black and white to make this black and white. Then you want to command click and click this one as well and press command E to group those together to merge them so it's all as one. Then you want to hide this bottom layer here so only this one is, is visible. And then you can go into, uh, and then you're just going to do that for the, for the next one. So we're going to do this one here, which is next. Click and drag it into the Photoshop document. Press command enter. Go to the quick selection tool. Make a selection of him here. Try not to get the shadows. Go back to select and mask, click OK, press Command J, get rid of the background, and then you want to move this layer back to kind of, uh, you want to click and move this, press Command T to transform, and you want to start moving and scaling this to relatively where it was, so right there, okay? Use the right and left arrow keys to, to make it better, and then you want to do the same thing, click here, go to the black and white, 
Command click this one, Command E to group those together so it's as one, and hide this layer here, and you're just gonna keep doing that. Then delete the background layers that you don't need. So once you have all of them in here, I've already done that, but let's pretend that we've done every single one, which is every single one like this, and we've made our copies and everything, but let's pretend there's like a lot of layers. All you're gonna do is go to File, go to Export, and go to Layers to Files. Make sure you delete everything else except the back the PNG images, which look like this. So we, we're only gonna say we're only gonna have the ones that are visible, which are the actual cutouts that are in black and white. So go to file, go to export, go to layers to files, choose a location, click browse. I'm gonna go to the desktop, I'm gonna go into frames here. Uh, I already have a, a folder, so I'm gonna name this uh, frames two. I'm gonna click open. That's where all my Im images are gonna be saved. Give this a prefix uh, prefix name, so I'm gonna name this frame. File type, make sure that's a PNG 24. And you wanna make sure that transparency is checked and these two are not. And then click run. And what Photoshop is gonna do, if you have the, the newest uh, version of Photoshop, it's gonna export all of these as, as a single uh, file, I guess. So like it exports them, all of them quickly, all the layers instead of having to individually save the files. So now if we go to Finder, if we go to Desktop, and we go into the Frames 2 folder, all of your cutouts, I only have two because i only done two, but you will have more. If you if you double click on these, you're gonna see that they're a PNG image, or you can press space, uh, the space bar to go in between, and you can see what it looks like. Sweet, so once you've done that, you're pretty much done, and we can go back into Final Cut Pro 10. So now once we're here, we have our, our cut here. So we're gonna press uh, Command B, and uh, we're gonna press the Position tool, so press P, move this, okay, around here. So now we have a gap. So press A to go back to the move tool. Import all of your cutouts. I've already done that, so they're right here. But we're just gonna go to file, you're gonna go to import, you're gonna go to media, and then you're gonna go to that folder that you saved it to, which is gonna be frames two. You would select all of these, you would click on import. I've already done that, and it looks like this. So these are all of my cutouts here, as you can see. We're gonna go into the screenshot that we have uh, without the guy in, in the in the actual image, which is this one. So we're gonna click and drag this one into here, into this empty area in the gray box, let go. And then you're gonna go into replace from start. So now we have this and it looks like, like that, okay? Sweet, so once you're here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the uh, PNG images and now we can click and drag this above the screenshot image. So now we're gonna go and scale this as, as you can trim this or uh, extend the length to however long you want. I'm gonna do something like this for now. I'm gonna click this and just trim this down to a couple of frames. Maybe, I don't know, like four frames maybe. Okay, and then we're gonna do this one here as well. This one comes next. So we're just gonna click and drag and sweet. So the reason that we don't have, uh, or the reason we don't wanna move the actual image in Photoshop is for this exact reason. We don't have to do that many adjustments here. So we're just gonna trim this down to match the other frames here. So now if I push play, it's gonna look like that. And of course, it's really slow, but we can easily adjust it. So select all of them, right click, new compound clip. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna name this one. And then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this back here. I mean, it really, we can do this, we can play with this last, but we're gonna select this clip here, the, the compound clip or the grouped clip, right click or press Command R to bring up the retiming option here. And then we're gonna click on this end piece and we're gonna drag this to the left to make it faster or drag it to the right if you wanna make it slower. So now if I go back and push play, it's gonna go a little bit faster. I'm gonna go a little bit faster as well, let's see. Uh, that's pretty good, sweet. So once we're done with that, we're gonna hold down Alt or Option and we're gonna click here to make another copy of this exact one. So then we have two copies. Select the second one, we're gonna go into, it looks like a like a speedometer, click on this, and then go to reverse clip to reverse it so it looks like this. Okay, perfect. So now you can trim this back down to here. And now if I let go, it's gonna go exactly back in position as it was. The color for this is, in, it's obviously in color, and then the cutout is in black and white. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the effects, we're gonna go into all video and audio, we're gonna type in black and white, so black and white. We're gonna drag this to each of these so that it matches, I mean, it matches our clip, of course, because we only had a black and white printer, which is completely fine. So now you can see that we have a very dark image and then we have a, a light image. It's easy, select both of these clips, right click and make another grouped clip. I'm gonna name this color change. 
And then we're going to go into the inspector window, go to your color adjustments tab where you have your color corrections, go to exposure and bring this up. I mean, I would suggest probably bringing up the, the highlights a bit. That should be the highlights. And just try to match it with the with this image, the frame before, before that one. So there, and then maybe the shadows can be a bit brighter. Perfect. So now if you go back and I push play, it looks extremely seamless. So now once we're here, all we got to do now is select both of these clips. We're going to do another grouped clip. So option G, I'm going to name this uh, hand held because we're going to be adding a handheld effect. So go to the effects, go to all video and audio, type in hand held, click and drag this directly onto that clip. And now you're going to have something that looks like this, which looks a little bit more realistic. So it's not completely frozen. Now you're going to see that once you do that, the effect does unfortunately make it zoom up a little bit and that's kind of a downside with this one. You don't have to do it, but I mean, you kind of want to. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you're, you're, you're done from this point. There is one thing that you can do and if you want, if you don't want the, the letterbox to be moving around, you can go and look on Google and just search for, I think it's a four by three aspect ratio letterbox and then drag it on top of your, your video clip here. So like this, and then trim this to the end, delete that piece. So now we have this, so it doesn't really move as you can see. So now if I were to go, so this is the aspect ratio, if that makes sense. Um, and if I go back and I push play, it's gonna look just like that. And then you're pretty much done with the effect. And maybe it was a little bit a lot for you guys. I'm not too sure. This is a little bit of an advanced tutorial, but if you guys really wanna step up your music video effects, this is the route to go. And like I said, Photoshop is for free. You guys can download it. You can, you can just do a trial just for this um, effect. And link is going to be in the description for everything you need. But just make sure that you print out the actual frame. You cut it out and then you start crumpling it up and taking a photo each after each crumple. And then you want to take a photo of it, of course, send it to your computer. And then once you're there, you're going to go into Photoshop, cut those out save it exactly in the same position as it was in the first frame, import that into Final Cut Pro 10, layer it over the, the image that we don't have, uh, the image without the person here, which should look like this, and then combine it all together, reverse this uh, middle clip here, and then combine it all together, adjust the color, add a handheld effect, add the letterbox, and you should have an amazing looking effect, just like Lil Yachty's music video here uh, or Kyle's uh, music video. So yeah, if you guys found this video helpful in any way, be sure to leave a like guys. That would be awesome. Turn on the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on a video and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.